Today we're going to be testing out 27 Windows games being run through the brand new game porting toolkit to translation layer through crossover. And this is going to be pushing the limit of what the M3 chip is capable of because this is not the M3 Pro or the M3 Max. This is just the M3 chip inside the fanless passively cooled MacBook Air. And we're not testing out games that are natively optimized for this chip. These Windows games were never designed to be run on an Apple Silicon Mac. In fact, there are three translation layers that we have to work through that is to say Windows to Mac OS, x86-64 to ARM64 via Rosetta 2, and DirectX 11 and 12 via D3D Metal. So today I'm going to take you through a variety of tests that are run on this base M3 chip. I've also tested out a ton of other popular games on the MacBook Air M1 as well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Basically all of those games that run on the M1 are going to run even better on the M3 chip as well, so make sure to check it out. And today's video is sponsored by Manta Sleep, and I'm wearing the Manta Sleep Mask Sound. And this is no joke, the most comfortable sleeping mask that I've ever used. Not only is the material lightweight and perforated for maximum airflow and ventilation, the C-shaped eye cups are extremely comfortable and can be easily adjusted to suit any face. And did I mention that this also contains razor thin Bluetooth headphones. These can be adjusted on the side using these convenient blue tabs and have a battery life of a huge 20 hours. And this is going to be absolutely perfect for blocking out light and sound the next time that you're trying to get some sleep in a busy environment. So make sure to click the link at the top of the description to go to the Manta Sleep website where you can find a huge range of other sleep masks which you can buy. Make sure to use my coupon code Andrew for 10% off your car order. So big thanks to Manta to sleep for sponsoring this video, let's get back to the main content. So here we're looking at Dark Souls Remastered, the classic From Software game first released on Windows PC back in 2012 and then remastered in 2018. The game is being run at 1080p at default graphics settings, there aren't many things you can actually change in this game. And this runs surprisingly well on the M3 chip, especially considering that this is a Windows title being translated through all of these translation layers. I struggle to see how a native Mac port might perform that much much better. Going over the 60 FPS mark is all that we really need, especially in a game that demands precise timing like this. Next up we're looking at Rise Son of Rome. So I remember this game as being one of the Xbox One launch titles, first released in 2013 and then it got a Windows port in 2014. Now this game is surprisingly demanding, after all it does use the Cry engine fourth generation, the same engine used by Kingdom Come Deliverance and Prey. And in order to get this to run on the M3 MacBook Air, we've had to turn down the settings to the lowest at 1080p and we've set the resolution scale to 50% effectively making this a game running at 720p. Now the frame rates through crossover and game porting toolkit are quite variable. It'll go anywhere between 40 and 75 FPS at 1080p. But nevertheless, this is a surprisingly playable game on the Mac. And a nice addition to the library as there aren't that many playable hack and slash games. Next up, we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077. So obviously this is a hugely demanding game, especially when we're trying to run it on a MacBook Air with the M3 chip. Frankly, this machine doesn't have enough GPU power to make this game play well and also look good at the same time. And frankly, it's kind of a miracle that this runs at all. This is a DirectX 12 title. And in order to get this to work, we've had to run this through FSR 2.1 Ultra Performance, which is basically blowing up a 360p image to 1080p and making use of sharpening algorithms to make it look kind of palatable. So the good thing here is that Game Porting Toolkit 2 seems to have fixed an FSR bug, which used to make the whole screen render black, but now it seems to render correctly. So low end machines like the MacBook Air can now use FSR properly and get somewhat playable frame rates. But if you have access to a Mac with more GPU cores, even the M1 Pro would play this game a lot better than the MacBook Air. And if you're looking for an open world game with better performance from CD Projekt Red, then look no further than The Witcher 3. So this game has received a lot of updates over the years. It's had a DirectX 12 update as well, but we are actually playing the DirectX 11 version because of better performance. So here I've turned the graphics settings down to 720p low, and the game still looks amazing. The performance is a lot more consistent than on 1080p. The metal HUD in the top right hand side isn't actually reporting accurate figures, I feel, but it does seem like the game is performing at over 60 FPS nonetheless. And this frame rate also seems to hold up during combat as well, making this a very decently playable Windows game on the MacBook Air. 
The next game we are looking at is the Windows version of Monster Hunter World. So I know that over the last few years, this is one of the most requested games to be played on the Mac. And finally, with Game Porting Toolkit 2 and Crossover, we can actually run this locally on Apple Silicon hardware. However, for one thing, the performance of the game isn't actually that good. For example, it takes a really long time to actually load up into the game world once you select your save. And to actually get a playable frame rate, we've had to run this at 720p on lower settings. And we've turned on Fidelity FX CAS, which is basically AMD's version of of an early dynamic resolution scaler. Now performance is quite jittery on the MacBook Air M3. With a higher end machine, you're gonna get much better performance. You can actually play this online using crossover on a Mac. So multiplayer is definitely possible. However, if you can play this on a higher end Mac, then this is gonna run a lot better. And on the software side, there's definitely a lot more optimization that can be done on the crossover translation layer. So next we are looking at Tetris Effect Connected, the latest version of Tetris. With a lot more bells and whistles compared to the original you might've played a few decades ago. So this game has got some great presentations, some really cool multiplayer modes, and a really atmospheric soundtrack with lots of cool animations and effects. We're running the Windows version of this game, which originally came out on the Epic Games Store and then came out on Steam in 2021. Now, of course, this game is not super demanding. We're actually able to play this at 1080p on high settings. We even have the resolution scaling set to 150%. Probably the only game in this list to actually go over the original scaling because the crossover game porting toolkit to translation layer can easily handle it on Mac hardware. So next up, we're looking at Hitman World of Assassination, aka Hitman 3. So the original Hitman game, Hitman 1, actually came out on macOS, but subsequent versions never got a Mac release. Thankfully, we can actually play it on this M3 MacBook Air using the crossover Game Porting Toolkit 2 translation layer. And we're actually getting decent-ish frame rates. So this is actually playable, especially compared to the M1 with only 8 gigabytes of RAM, which basically would stutter constantly. This Windows game is actually very playable on the base M3. MacBook Air. We are forced to run this at 720p low, but this isn't too bad given the number of translation layers. The fact that Hitman World of Assassination is now playable on the Mac gives us access to tons of content from Hitman 1, 2, and 3, and is a welcome addition to the Mac gaming library. Next up is Spyro Reignited Trilogy, the remake of the original Spyro Trilogy developed by Insomniac Games, originally for PlayStation 1. Now the Windows remake of this game includes the original Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Year of the Dragon, which I'm playing here right now on the MacBook Air M3. So what I've heard is that this game hasn't been playable unless Game Porting Toolkit 2 is being used. And the performance of this Windows game on the MacBook Air M3 isn't too bad. There are quite frequent shader compilation stutters, but at 1080p at medium settings, we're hovering between 45 to 75 FPS, which isn't too bad. The next up, we are testing out Spider-Man Remastered. So as you can see, it doesn't really perform very well on the M3 chip. And this is despite the fact that we are running the new FSR 3.1 update. We have this on the lowest possible settings with ultra performance upscaling, and we even have frame generation enabled as well. However, frame generation does introduce quite a lot of latency. It's not really designed to allow low end computers to run games at high frame rates. Like I've mentioned before, something like an M1 Pro would be able to play this much better. We need more GPU cores, more RAM. Unfortunately, the M3 MacBook Air just doesn't have enough power to be able to run this properly. Technically, the M3 MacBook Air will run this game, but you won't have a good experience. So next up is the meme game Chained Together, which is a kind of only up multiplayer game. The objective is to keep climbing up until you reach the objective. It's very easy to fall down and then have to repeat all of your progress. It's not a particularly demanding game in general, but if you do have latency, it does affect your ability to time and make your jumps properly, which can be a bit frustrating. So we're running the Windows version of this game through Game Porting Toolkit 2 and Crossover. I've had to turn down the settings substantially in order to get a playable frame rate. So this is a 50% resolution scale at 1080p on low settings. Now this is kind of designed to be a multiplayer game and thankfully you can actually connect to the multiplayer online and it seems to work fine. And even on my MacBook Air M3, we're getting a respectable 40 to 60 something FPS. Next, we are looking at Elden Ring. So this is another From Software game that we're covering in this video. The recent DLC also functions fine using crossover and game porting toolkit 2 on the Mac. So in order to get playable frame rates on the M3 MacBook Air, what I've done is I've turned down the resolution down to 540p, which is actually quite low, but it does give us an actual playable frame rate. So we're hovering around 30 to 35 FPS at the lowest settings. Now I know that 540p is a pretty terrible resolution to play any game at, but if you're Windows gaming on a Mac, then you're gonna to have to accept several compromises in order to get these beloved games working on your Mac. 
And here we're looking at Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, so another From Software game with similarish levels of performance. So I'm actually running this at 720p. We are playing this at low graphics settings and we're getting about 30 to 40 FPS. Now the thing to bear in mind is that there is a lot of shaded compilation stutter, so just be aware of that. When the animations run for the first time, they need to be cached, otherwise they're going to stutter. Otherwise, it's a fairly stable experience on the MacBook Air M3. It's certainly enough to play the game. However, if you want to play this one seriously then definitely consider upgrading to a Mac with more GPU cores you're going to have a much better experience. So next up is Sonic Frontiers. So this is another Windows game which only managed to work on Game 14 Toolkit version 2. M3 is able to run this at 1080p on low settings. In order to hit an actual decent frame rate what I've done is I've set the resolution scale to 75% which thankfully is an option in this game and on these fast speed levels we're able to get a decent playable frame rate and speed. However, in the open world puzzle sections, the frame rate does dip a little bit more. So I've set the resolution scale here to 50%, which is still very playable. And this also seems fine for the more complex combat sections too. Next up, we're looking at cat puzzle game called Little Kitty Big City. If you're looking for a follow-up to the cat game Stray, then this isn't quite going to be it. This is more of a cozy adventure game. So here we're running the Windows version through Crossover and Game Porting Toolkit 2 on the M3 Mac. And the performance at 1080p at very high graphics settings isn't too bad, about 55 to 70 or so FPS. Not that this Unity title is particularly demanding in the first place. There isn't a huge amount of action in this game, so frame rates aren't that particularly important and this cozy little cat game runs great on the M3 chip. So next up this game is Age of Wonders 4. So this is the 4x fantasy strategy game. It's the follow-up to the previous Age of Wonders Planetfall and here we're running the Windows game which requires Direct X 12 so previously wasn't playable unless we were running game porting toolkit. So demands for this game are quite high. We can't really get good frame rates unless we turn everything onto low and I've set the resolution scale to 50% which just about makes this sort of playable. However without any kind of sharpening options or algorithms it does make the game look very ugly when it's being outputted to 1080p. I can't really trust the metal hard on the top right hand side. The actual game itself feels like it's running about 15 to 20 FPS so that's probably what you're going to be able to expect from the M3 chip. So next we're looking at Zenless Zone Zero, the new MiHoYo game which now works on Crossover thanks to a recent update of Crossover 24.04 which now supports the new HoYoVerse launcher. So this is basically a gacha game that is made by the same developers as Genshin Impact and Honkai Third Impact and also Honkai Star Rail as well and I think the main difference with this game is the fact that this is more of an action type game. It has some really cool animations and fighting effects. Now the main issue is that when we're running this through crossover there is quite a lot of shader compilation stutter especially on the base M3 chip. Now I didn't have that many issues on the M3 Max. What I did do is turn down the resolution scale down to 80% which makes the game run quite a lot better on 1080p. It's probably due to this that the metal HUD isn't actually showing the correct frame rate. Anyway I hope that Mahoya do release this on Mac OS sometime in the future as they've done with Honkai Star Rail especially as there's already a native ARM version on the iPad and iPhone versions of this game. So next we're looking at Horizon Zero Dawn. So this recently had a fix on crossover which stopped the slowdown bug. However the slowdown fix is only going to be relevant if you can actually play this game at a decent frame rate with the M3's GPU. Here I've got this set to 1080p on low graphic settings and I have FSR set to performance mode so it's being upscaled quite aggressively here. For me this is just about playable. If you're wondering whether the sequel Horizon Forbidden West is playable on Game Porting Toolkit 2, technically this is possible using the F16C patcher but in its current implementation it is extremely buggy. If you want to find out how to do that then make sure to click on the link at the top of the video description. Next up we're looking at the game Pal World. So this is the Pokemon like survival crafting game. Performance on the M3 MacBook Air isn't great but it is a huge improvement over the base M1 MacBook Air, which I've tested before. One thing you have to bear in mind is the fact that this is a self-hosted world. So the Mac is actually doing a lot of the work providing the server information. If you joined another multiplayer game, then this would actually run substantially faster. However, in my own self-hosted world, I'm running this at 720p on the lowest graphics settings and we're only getting about 15 to 20 FPS with a lot of compilation stutter as well. 
technically playable but not a good experience on the base MacBook Air M3. So here we're testing out the Bethesda game Fallout 4. So this does require several steps in order to get this working on crossover on a Mac. If you wanted to find out how to do this yourself, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my Fallout 4 tutorial. Mainly the steps involve installing the Fallout 4 cross tie and then also doing some overrides for the audio fixes for dialogue. Now not all of the issues are going to be solved. There are going to be some graphical errors with flickering textures and lighting, but generally speaking, it's very much playable. So here on the M3 chip on the MacBook Air, we're getting about 40, 35 FPS. It's a playable, but not perfect experience on the M3. So next up we're playing Diablo 4. So there's no Mac version of this game, despite the fact that Diablo 3 was a Mac port. We have to run this DirectX 12 Windows game through the crossover translation layer. We're only able to really play this properly at 1080p on the M3 chip. And even so, we have to put this onto the last graphics settings and turn on FSR 2 to ultra performance mode. And in order to get acceptable levels of performance, you're going to have to accept that the graphics are gonna look kind of terrible at this level of upscaling, but it does actually allow you to play the game so that's the kind of main compromise that I can see here. Now if you wanted to play a Diablo game that performed a lot better then we have the Diablo 2 resurrected kind of remaster of the game with the updated DirectX 12 graphics. So here we're running at 1080p on low settings and we've turned on the resolution scale to 80% and it's surprisingly playable hovering about the 60 FPS mark the entire time and actually looks great and it's much more better and it's much better suited to playing on a low end computer like a MacBook Air M3 with all of these translation layers. So here we're testing out Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, the remasters of the original games and we're running here at 1080p low resolution scale of 80%. So technically I think that the M3 should be able to play this game pretty well even through these translation layers but I found the frame pacing quite jittery. I set the resolution scale to 80% and this probably is confusing the metal hub frame rate counter in the top right hand side. Now on higher end Mac computers this has the headroom to actually play this game properly but on the M3 chip I think we're lacking enough GPU power in order to play this game relatively smoothly. So even though I've put this onto low settings at 1080p at 80% this isn't quite enough for the Mac to handle. So next up we're looking at Nier Automata. So this is the Japanese role-playing action multi-genre shoot-em-up type game. Previously through crossover on Wine D3D you could actually play this but you couldn't actually enter a username so you can start the game properly. Thankfully it looks like this issue has been fixed with D3D Metal and it's now very much playable even on the lowly MacBook Air with the M3 chip. So I was doing a playthrough of this game and it does actually seem very much an enjoyable title to play on the Mac even through these translation layers and it's a game I'm definitely going to be checking out in the future. So here we're playing Tales of Arise, the JRPG. So this game runs surprisingly well through crossover on a Mac. However, in order to get good frame rates on the MacBook Air M3, I put this on to 1080p on low graphics settings and turn the resolution scale down to only 50%. Now this doesn't look amazing being upscaled up to 1080p, but it does make the game playable. And it's certainly better than previous options of trying to run this through a virtual machine like Parallels, which had much worse performance. The next game that we are looking at is Biomutant. So this game released back in 2021 on Windows to a pretty big fanfare, but hasn't had much kind of follow through since then. The performance on the tutorial level can be really good. So we're running this on 1080p at low settings with a resolution scale of 50%. And the tutorial boss level can actually function pretty well. However, when we get to the more open-ended levels. I've had to turn down the resolution scale to only 25% in order to get a playable frame rate. It looks pretty terrible, but it was the only way that I could actually make this game playable on the M3 chip. Next up, we're looking at Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. So this is a survival type game, kind of similar to Vampire Survivors, which is a kind of spin-off from the mainline Deep Rock Galactic games, which you can actually play through crossover on a Mac as well. So here I'm playing at 1080p on default settings. There aren't many graphic settings you can change on this game. And I've set the resolution scale to 80% because once there's a lot of enemies on screen at once, which is pretty much inevitable in every single stage, then you're going to definitely benefit from having that extra boost of performance. Now, I've actually played quite a lot of this game on a Mac, and I think that this is one of the ideal candidates for crossover, making it the perfect kind of title to play in between breaks because it's quite short, roguelike type game. Perfect kind of title for playing on a Mac. So lastly, we are looking at the game Control. So it was actually announced at WWDC 2024 that Control would be actually getting a native 
macOS port. Now, exactly when this is going to come out and whether this is going to cost more than, the, say, the Steam version of this game yet remains to be seen. Now, ironically, you might want to use Game Porting in Toolkit 2 to play this game now rather than wait for the Mac port to come out later because it seems to work really well on even the MacBook Air with the M3 chip. Yes, this is only running at 1080p and low settings at 50% resolution scale, but it's definitely enough to make this game feel enjoyable, enough so that you might want to pick up this game in a Steam sale right now rather than wait for the Mac port, which obviously is going to have better performance, but we have no idea how much it's going to cost, whether it's going to come to Steam or whether it's going to be a Mac App Store exclusive. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. I'm going to be doing more testing between the MacBook Air M3 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 8 gigabytes of RAM doing comparison in the very near future. Let me know what you want me to test in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.